Let me give you the top 10 emotional needs of men and women. This comes from a book called His Needs, Her Needs by William F. Harley. It's a best-selling book. He's a Christian, um, I think he's a psychologist, but it's Last nice. Name? Harley, like Harley Davidson. Okay. And again, I'm going to give you a 10-point book report and tell you what was in it. And he also wrote another book, companion book, that's called How to Affair Proof Your Marriage. And he says if you do certain things, you don't ever, if, if these emotional needs are met in marriage, you'll never have to worry about an affair. And I'm here to second that. And it's the fact that we all have, what he talks about is the fact that we all have these emotional needs. Men and women have these same 10 needs. But when they ordered them in, in rank order and put them in priority, the top five for men are opposite of the top five for women. So what a woman needs from her husband is completely different than what a man needs from his wife. And I, I go through this, and it's always good for me as a third party to explain this because I can say what I need to say, and it's not them trying to say it to each other and get all touchy and offended, overly sensitive. Um, and so that will be your role if you're going to be working with people, couples that come to you and say, listen, we're having problems in our marriage. Could you help us? You'll be able to say these things. I'm going to give you men's first. What is it men need from their wives? Number one, sexual fulfillment. Sexual fulfillment. At this point, we've all been around a while. You're probably the youngest one here, Rita. How old are you? Okay. So we've all got a minimum of four decades on the earth. <laughs> and you probably have come to the realization that sex for a man is different than sex for a woman. And I said, feminists would really hate me if they heard me say this, but... I tell women, there are times you're going to need to have sex with your husband when you may not want to. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be a victim and a doormat and a martyr and be abused. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that there are times if men feel discouraged, scared, vulnerable, hurt, depressed, that they may want to be with their wife sexually. And she may have had a really busy day, and that's the last thing on her mind. But if she knows her husband needs her that way, and she loves him, she will make herself available for him because the Bible says her body belongs to him, and his body belongs to her. And that we're not to abstain except for purposes of prayer and fasting. Now, a woman has a right to say no, and a man needs to respect that, as long as she's not saying no all the time. And for the record, if you want this little step, because <coughs> I'll say to people, do you have a... Is your sex drive high, excessive, or low, or are you just not interested at all? The majority of people say I'm not interested at all. And you would be surprised how many young married couples in their 20s are going six to eight months without sex. That's indicative of the stress that people are carrying. Um, so, just so you know, statistically, the average, the average, um, numbers of times that married couples have sex in North America is, I read this stat years ago, and I read it again about two years ago, and they help the average Don't say it. is four to six times a month, oh. which is one to one and a half times a week. And so I just tell people, you guys have to decide within your own marriage you know, maybe you both like it more often than that, or less than that. It's just that gives you an idea to know some people, she might say, he has an exceedingly high sex drive. And he's going, you know, twice a month? I don't think he's asking too much. Um, so I just share that stat so that they have something to measure it against. And likewise, I tell men, if you want to have sex with your wife, do not come home after you've both been at work, she's standing at the sink, and she's just cooked a big meal, and she's got two loads of laundry to do, and you're on your duff in the recliner in front of the TV, doing this and saying, hey honey, heading upstairs, come on up. <laughs> <laughs> but 
she's going to tell you. Yeah, I'll be there in a couple hours. <laughs> um, or something else. And it goes along, I have a husband whose love language is physical touch. Most men, the majority of men I have found their love language is their physical touch and words of affirmation. Right up there at quality time. Those three have always been men. Number two, what men want. Recreational companionship. Recreational companionship. Every man, when you start dating his wife, usually has some hobbies or interests. And in my marriage, my husband liked to fish and play golf. And he always wanted me to go with him. Well, it didn't take me long to realize I did not want to do that. I said, if you want to put me in a boat in the middle of a lake, that's great. I love to fish. But don't ask me to put on waders and go down in a mucky stream and river to shoot with the flies and the trees. And that's, there's nothing fun there at all. And golf is just asinine to me. And I said, it takes too much patience. I have no interest in that. So thanks, but no thanks. Um, so what I learned was, the whole concept behind this is, every man wants his wife to join him in the things that he's interested in. And he will ask her. And if she says no often enough, he'll find somebody else to do it with. Number three, what men want is an attractive spouse. An attractive spouse. And I tell women, you don't need to be a movie starlet or a little sex pot. But every man has certain things that he would like his wife to do to look good for him. Now, when we first got married, the only thing my husband said to me was, I don't ever want to come home and find you in sweatpants. I hate sweatpants. I said, well, I'm not a sweatpants kind of girl, so that shouldn't be a problem. And he's really not said a whole lot over the years, except... Every now and then, if it's a Saturday, I get nowhere to go, and I don't put makeup on, and I'm going to go to the store. And he'll say, are you going to put something on your face before you go? And the girls would say, Dad, that is so rude. But I didn't take it insultingly. What I've learned is he prefers me with makeup. So <clears throat> some husbands like their wives with long hair. Some husbands like short hair. They, they'll say, I don't want you to ever cut your hair. Or they like their wife with makeup, without makeup. They like her to wear slacks because they say her butt looks good in slacks. Or they like her to wear skirts because her legs look good. Maybe it's what she wears to bed at night. Maybe it's lingerie. Do you all know what it was that the man in your life liked? Or just number four, what men like. Admiration slash respect. Admiration slash respect. And what I tell women is, you need to realize that men get their self-esteem from women, from their wives. But women do not get it from their husbands. Women draw from all their other relationships. Their children, they draw their self-esteem from other sources. Men draw it primarily from their wives. That's why the Bible says wives respect your husband. Exactly, because God knew how hard it was going to be when we talk about the other side. Um, it's a fascinating dynamic as I look at it in the light of this study I've been doing. There's a reason God told us to do that and why he told men to love their wives because mm -hmm. he knew how hard it was going to be for them to love their wives more than themselves. Mm -hmm. And for us to respect them when there are many, many reasons not to. And again, it's about influence. We have the ability to build him up or tear him down with our words. Um, and so what I tell women is, uh, husbands will go out and, and work hard, slay dragons, put up with all kinds of abuse and, and nastiness and people giving them a hard time. As long as they can come home and know that their wife believes in them and that she thinks he's a good guy and that she would take up for him and stand with him. The last one for men, another one feminists would not like, what men say they need is domestic support. 
domestic support. And what this means is the old saying that says a man's home is his castle is very true. Because men want to come home and feel safe and secure and come in and know that his wife is managing the household. Not that she's doing all the work. He will work and help, but he wants to know that she has a sense and has brought order to the home. That she knows what's in the cupboard for food. If he can't find those black pants, she probably knows. She knows where the kids have got to be. She knows what doctor's appointment he's supposed to be at. Um, and he'll do often what she asks to help out just he looks to her to bring order to the household. It gets complicated when women work outside of the household. But again, scripture is pretty simple. We as people tend to complicate things. We are living in a time where many women need to work. Um, you'll have to figure out how that works in your own household. But I can't manage my house well and work full time and raise children. I could, that's me saying personally. So I work part time and halfway manage my home. <laughs> uh, I would say probably 75% of the time, what men say to me is, I would move number four up. And the one that men say they would move up is the need that's not being met. And they'll say, well, you know, sex, we can move that down. But when they move down, they're basically saying, that's being fulfilled, okay. And I also say, tell her where she's doing the best job. Where does she get an A plus? And where does she need the most improvement? So he gets to give her feedback, say she, she does a really good job of domestic support. She could improve with recreational companionship. We don't do anything together. And so it's a chance for them to dialogue and have, but I have to help facilitate that conversation. So that's what you would be doing. I want you to practice this stuff at home, but you're going to be talking to couples as well. And there are times, it's not that you have to sit down and teach them all this, there are just some times when I'm talking to a wife and she's saying this or this or that is wrong. And I'll say, how are you doing with sex? You having sex with your husband? Are you disrespecting your husband? I'll go through this list in my head and just check in with her. Because if they're having problems where she thinks he's running around, chances are these, these are not being met. Let me give you the women's. Number one, what women said they need. Affection. And you can put in parentheses behind that without sex. Because men will say, well, I'd like to show her some affection. And I said, you don't get it. She'd like to hold your hand or have you put your hand on her leg without thinking it's got to progress to something else. And affection is, you can write this definition because that's a very benign term. Affection is anything he does that makes her feel protected, cherished, loved, accepted and like she belongs and I tell wives whatever it is that the man in your life does whether it's a husband a father you need to tell him what that is so he knows when he's getting it right because a lot of the guys say, I don't have a clue he might think he's getting something right when he, and that tendency might be very annoying to her so when he gets it right say I really like it when you do this and it will be different for everyone. Number two, what women need from their husbands is conversation. Um, women get really frustrated because their husbands won't talk to them a lot of the time. There are the rare occasions when it's the man who talks and the wife who won't say anything. But often the wife will say, I just don't know what's going on in his head. And he sits there and stews about something, and he's in a bad mood, he's a bear, he's depressed, he wants to sulk for days, and I keep saying, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he says, nothing, just leave me alone, leave me alone. Well, keeping in mind that some people need time to process information, conversation, I tell men, she needs you to engage with her 
and talk without problem solving, without rescuing, without fixing, without telling her what to do. Learn how to listen. And he will say, well, if she's telling me she must want me to do something about it. I said, no, she just wants somebody to talk to. And then there are times she doesn't want you to say anything. And the guys are going, well, how am I supposed to know the difference? And I say, why? Well, you need to tell him. Say, just listen to me while I vent for a few minutes. Number three, women need openness and honesty. Openness and honesty. And I tell the men, women can deal with most anything as long as they hear it from you. Don't let her hear it off the street or from some third hand party because you're going to be in deep, deep doo doo if she does. And trust takes a very long time to build, but it takes just a moment to destroy. And if you break trust and you destroy trust in the marriage, um, you'll be a long time getting it back. So just tell her what it is. She will be angry. A lot of guys will lie over the stupidest things because they don't want to get yelled at by their wife. Not knowing that it's going to be three times worse because she's going to hear it from somebody else. So tell her what you need to tell her. Just bite the bullet and you will have to listen probably to her ire and her disapproval, but she will be much easier to deal with as long as she hears about it from you. Number four, what women need, financial support. Financial support. Is that the same as security? I don't know. I believe it does involve that to some measure. Here again, I don't think feminists would like this, but I believe God put in every woman the need and the, the desire to be provided for by her husband. And what I have found is women don't care so much what her hus their husbands do. They just take pride in being able to say, my husband's a really hard worker. He works very hard and he provides for his family. Women like being able to say that. It doesn't matter how much money he's earning. I have had some women come in to me and say, behind closed doors when their husbands weren't there. My husband got laid off today through no fault of his own. He's on unemployment. I'm embarrassed. I'm really embarrassed to have to tell people that. And I know it's not his fault. He's been a hard worker our entire married life, but now he's unemployed. Or she'll say, my husband's on disability. He got hurt at work. And now he's on permanent disability. That's embarrassing. I don't want him to know I'm embarrassed by that. But it's very embarrassing to say my husband's disabled. And a wife will go out and work and do her fair share to bring money into the family, but she wants to know her husband's going to do whatever it takes to provide for his family. The last one that women say they need, family commitment. Family commitment. A wife needs to know that she and their children, if they have any, are her husband's number one priority. And that they're going to come first before his buddies, his co-workers, his job, his golf game, his fishing, his hobbies, before his mother or his father or his siblings. She, he's not to make any, well I shouldn't say he's not to. She would prefer that he not make any decisions unless he considers how it's going to impact her and the kids. That when he makes decisions, he makes them for we and not for me. Now, I would ask the ladies, and you don't have to answer, um, would you order, reprioritize those in any way? And if you do, chances are that's an emotional need that's not being met. And which one would you push down if you push down any? And I tell couples, go home and talk about this. This is a great dialogue starter. 
first of all, full-blown sexual affairs don't start because somebody wants sex. Okay, somebody's going to run on their spouse. It starts because there was an emotional connection. And the emotional ha connection happens because one of these emotional needs was not being met at home, and somebody somewhere else touched that place, that dry, thirsty place in your heart. And I want you to think back of any time in your life when you really enjoyed spending time with this person, and for what reason? Be very, very careful. Tend to these things. Tend to these emotional needs. And if yours aren't being met, let your spouse know. Because that's how we get into dangerous water. And the enemy knows. Because he watches where we're dry and thirsty and parched. That's that little Achilles heel place. Where just now, you're not looking for an affair. You're not looking for an unholy emotional tie, soul tie. But then all of a sudden somebody's going to be right there. Your face. And meet your need for conversation, affection. And you're going to be hooked. And it'll, it'll happen before you know it. 